Today, Bitcoin extends its losses, falling about $10,000 from its recent high. Grayscale's CEO says fees on the asset manager's Bitcoin ETF will drop over time. And Brian Dixon with Off The Chain Capital weighs in on what's contributing to Bitcoin slide. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Brandon Gomez. Bitcoin extending its losses this morning, trading just under $64,000 as of noon Eastern. The move lower helped drag other cryptocurrencies down as well. Ether fell more than 6% to just under $3,300. That's after topping $4,000 last week for the first time since December of 2021. Solana also sank 10% to $182, a day after crossing $200 for the first time since November of 2021. Now, Bitcoin's weakness began Friday as traders started cashing in on profits from this year's crypto run. Bitcoin soared about 70% to a 2024 peak of $73,679, which it notched last Wednesday. Bitcoin's drop also reflected in crypto-focused stocks today. Bitcoin proxy MicroStrategy falling nearly 12% as of noon, and crypto exchange Coinbase tumbling 5%. Sticking with Coinbase as we hit today's top stories, the Crypto Council for Innovation, or CCI, filed an amicus brief yesterday in support of the crypto exchange. Coinbase challenged the SEC's denial of the company's rulemaking petition, and CCI argues that the SEC's refusal to engage in traditional rulemaking in favor of vague and inconsistent enforcement actions has caused and will continue to cause significant harm to American competitiveness in the new digital age. The council also warned that without clear and consistent guidance, the digital asset industry will not reach its full potential in the U.S. and will be pushed to other jurisdictions. An SEC spokesperson declined to comment beyond public filings on the matter. Coinbase has been in a legal battle with the regulators since the agency charged the crypto company with operating as an unregistered securities exchange, broker, and clearing agency back in June. Next, Grayscale CEO says fees on its Bitcoin ETF will drop in the coming months as the crypto ETF market matures. In an interview with CNBC yesterday, Michael Sonnenschein softened his earlier stance defending costs above the market average. The crypto fund manager charges a 1.5% management fee for GBTC, much higher than those by other Bitcoin ETF providers, including BlackRock and Fidelity, which charge 0.25%. According to CoinShares data, Grayscale's GBTC has logged outflows of more than $12 billion since it was converted into an ETF in January, due in no small part to those higher than average fees. Grayscale also wants to introduce other avenues of giving investors less costly ways of accessing its Bitcoin ETF, including a mini version of its flagship product. Last, a federal judge blasted the SEC for a gross abuse of power in its legal battle with blockchain firm Digital Licensing. District Judge Robert Shelby said in a Monday filing that the agency engaged in bad faith abuse of the judicial process and undermined the integrity of the court proceedings in its attempt to freeze the company's assets. The SEC sued Digital Licensing, also known as Debtbox, back in July of 2023, claiming it defrauded investors. The regulator also pointed to a YouTube video posted by Debtbox, where the firm said it had moved its operations to Abu Dhabi and was under the region's jurisdiction, not the SEC's. Well, the SEC claimed the company was trying to skirt U.S. regulations, but lawyers for the company said those claims were misleading and that the company was responding to a viewer question about the benefits of operating in UAE. In the end, the judge sanctioned the SEC and ordered it to pay some of Debtbox's legal costs. We did reach out to the SEC for comment, and a spokesperson told us the agency is reviewing the decision. All right, for our main story, Crypto World's Jordan Smith spoke with Brian Dixon, CEO of Off The Chain Capital, about this week's steepening declines for Bitcoin and whether the selling pressure is here to stay. All right, Brian, thank you so much for being here. First things first, we have to talk about your reaction to this crypto sell-off. Uh, Bitcoin's sinking back down to around $62,000 mark as we're speaking. After it was at $73,000 just a week ago, Ether's down at around $3,200. Is this just part of the plan, you know, short-term pullback before the next run higher? 
I would think so. Largely, we've seen this in a lot of historical cycles as we get closer to the halving. We'll see an increase in price. We'll see some consolidation and a drawback. But in addition to that, I also think we're seeing some continued selling from the crypto bankruptcies that occurred in 2022. And you can actually see that a little bit because of the huge outflow we saw with GBTC yesterday. There was over 640 million of an outflow yesterday. And I think part of that had to do with probably some of these bankruptcies that are liquidating their GBTC. You know, there was a lot of talk when those companies went under that we would see the knock on effects for those for weeks and months and maybe even years to come. Where are we in that process? You're talking about GBTC. You know, we're, we're still seeing companies move through that process. Some have exited. Um, where are we in that process of seeing the knock on effects uh, long term? I actually think we're really close to the end. Uh, in my opinion, probably in the next three to six weeks, I think we would most likely see a lot of that GBTC being unloaded and some of the other digital assets that they've held. And it's kind of interesting timing because now we're reaching the point where we have the halving that's due to occur in late April. And so with that, we're seeing the prices naturally rise like we've seen in historical cycles. So I'm hoping that that balances it out a little bit with the outflows that we'll see from GBTC or some of the other decrease in some of the other digital asset positions with the increase in interest as we're getting closer to the halving cycle. But I would say probably no more than another month or two is my assumption. One thing I saw you point to on Twitter was the amount of Bitcoin that's being held in wallets and not traded. And you noted, I think it was Glassnode, um, shows more than 70% of Bitcoin hasn't moved in more than a year. Talk about why that's so important to pay attention to as we're watching price and adoption of crypto right now. Sure. So when you look at the percentage of Bitcoin that hasn't moved in a year, which according to Glassnode was around 70 percent, I think after the last week, it's probably more around 67 to 68 percent because we did see some of these long term holders sell and take a little bit of profits with the price hike. But still, let's let's use 70 percent as a round number. So 70 percent of people holding Bitcoin for over a year is so important because when we look at the supply demand economics with the ETFs entering the market and creating this tremendous amount of demand, if 70 percent of the Bitcoin holders are holding long term, that leaves 30 percent of the tradable market that these ETFs can go out and actually acquire this Bitcoin. Well, what does that do as a market? That actually creates a price appreciation because people need to be incentivized with a higher price in order for them to sell their Bitcoin. And so when you have this thinly traded market like that, I think in time, that's just going to further create price enhancement on the asset. We've talked a lot about Bitcoin here, but, uh, you know, there's also altcoins that have soared this year. Um, what's your reaction to the likes of Solana, which is up more than 60 percent so far this year, uh, and meme tokens, I guess, which are, are, seem to be all the rage right now, despite uh, the sell off we're seeing? Yeah. So on the meme token side, I think that's largely speculative and there's some people that can get really lucky in that, but I think most people aren't so lucky with uh, making profits on those kinds of things. But in terms of Solana, I think people are just recognizing the value of the protocol. Solana is gaining tremendous market share on Ethereum. It's growing very quickly. There's more retail and institutional demand. And what are the reasons for that? If we look at Solana as a protocol, it's cheaper, faster, and more efficient than a lot of its competitors. And it has been since inception. So as it's gaining market share, it's gaining utility and applications built on top of it, we're going to see that ecosystem and that base layer, Solana itself, really accrete value over time. And I also think we're seeing a lot of interest on the institutional side, getting exposure to some of the digital asset trust products and things like Grayscale or Osprey, where you can get exposure to Solana. And then they're probably also trying to work the different net asset value versus the premium expansion on top of them. Let's talk about your investment strategy. Uh, Off the Chain Capital says it uncovers value in blockchain and digital assets using a Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett investment style. Um, talk about what that looks like in crypto investing. And I guess also explain to me why you would make that comparison, especially with someone who seems to be skeptical of crypto. Of course. Warren Buffett is one of the most brilliant investors of all time. And I think one of the things, unfortunately, that he's missed a lot on is technology in their early phases, right? He was a big miss on Apple in the early days. He's not understanding the value of Bitcoin. And part of that could be is that uh, Berkshire Hathaway is one of the largest, if not the largest owner of banks in the entire country, right, in their portfolio. And Bitcoin is a threat to the traditional financial system status quo. But what we do is we actually take Warren's tried and proven methodology in terms of investing and finding assets at a deep discount, and we're applying it to this new technology sector. So simply what we do with Off the Chain is we're looking for unique ways to acquire a dollar's worth of blockchain assets for 50 cents. And we do that between two parts of our investment thesis. We look for private equity. 
in very mature blockchain companies. So we're looking for businesses that are profitable, have minimum or no debt, uh, post Series A round, and we're trying to find forced or motivated sellers that are seeking liquidity. So we can attempt to capture those shares at a discount from where we believe they're intrinsically valued. And then when the same line of thinking, we do the same strategy, but we characterize them into mispriced digital assets. And what that means to us is we're going to try to find ways to acquire digital assets at a discount. So as an example, we could go into a bankruptcy proceeding where we have bankruptcy claim holders sitting on a bankruptcy claim with Bitcoin as the underlying asset. And they may be tied up in that proceeding for several years, but we could attempt to offer them liquidity today to capture that Bitcoin at a discount from where it's valued. All right, that does it for Crypto World today. We'll see you back here again tomorrow.